I was flicking through Twitter when I saw a tweet from Jonathan Morrison. It was of his new desk setup which had awesome cable management. And I was like, whoa, that's dope. Then I realized, hey, that's rack server cable tray which sparked the idea of adding said tray to my desk, which was in desperate need of cable management. So that's what we're gonna to do today on this week's episode of Studio 2020. Let's get into it. G'day guys, welcome back to the channel and if you're new here, my name's Cab and I make tech videos every week. Now these videos are usually on budget gear or high value purchases as well as a little bit of DIY and this new series Studio 2020 is exactly that. It is budget DIY upgrades that provide huge value. So last week I showed you how to 3D model in Google SketchUp and this week we're going to be doing some cable management to get rid of all those dangly cables that I used to have on my desk. They might be asking, Cam, why are you all of a sudden doing all of these projects? Well, I've been doing YouTube for a whole year and I've got some big project ideas for 2020. So to make sure that you don't miss out on any future videos, click subscribe down below anytime throughout this video and click the bell icon so you'll be notified when the next episodes come out. So to get started, you need to buy some rack server cable tray. Now this stuff can run you about 20 bucks if you find the right place. So shop around, don't pay 150 bucks, you can get it cheaper. Then I popped into my local hardware store, grabbed a couple of right angle brackets, bolts, nuts, and washers. Don't worry, everything is in the description below. Now since we are doing DIY, don't be afraid to grab right angle brackets that don't fit perfectly. Here I'm just upsizing them to quarter inch to fit the bolts. Top tip, when drilling metal, use slow speed and pressure. After test fitting, we know our brackets and bolts are ready to go. Now I'm going to hit my hardware with a coat of paint, so first I'm going to wipe them down with some wax and grease remover. I'm going to mount the bolts raised from the box to ensure that there's even surface coverage all around the head. Heading outside where it's well ventilated, I'm going to lay down three coats of paint, letting it sit to dry depending on the instructions on the can. In between coats, I'll start work on the cable tray. You need to record down measurements for where cables pass through the tray and the desk, as well as taking notes for any other obstructions. Back in the garage, I marked out these locations for cutting pass-through slots between the tray and the desk top. Making use of the existing holes, I was able to pass through my hacksaw blade. Shout out to my brother Brad, that's his hand here. He helped with this part as well as filming throughout this video. Getting to work, I was able to move out a large section for the desk leg and give it a quick file to remove any sharp edges. Test fitting showed that it fit perfectly, however I needed to add some extra deep notches for larger cables to be passed through between this rack and the desk, as well as I wanted to taper this corner off. And at this point the project was put on hold for a month, so it went overseas to Europe and travelled Paris, London, uh, Edinburgh, it was a fantastic holiday away, and if you're wondering what I took with me, I've got a travel tech backpack video up here with uh, this anti-theft, you can't, there's no zips, you can't pickpocket it, um, so all the gear that I took, check out that video, but uh, on my return I did a bit of an upgrade, I was like, I'm sick of this hand sawing with the uh, hacksaw and upgraded to some real power tools. We got an angle grinder, so uh, this sped up the rest of the project. With an angle grinder in hand, I was able to upsize a lot of these notches to go a lot deeper into the cable tray. Not only were the cuts cleaner, but life was a lot easier. I also added some tape to any of the cable pass-throughs just to protect cables from being snagged. Returning the tray for final fitment, I can use my shop stool as a jack. So if you're doing it DIY solo, this is a cool idea. Over on the side, you can see the tapered edge, which looks a lot cleaner, as well as the pass through notches for small USB cables, as well as that large one that I just added for bigger kettle style plugs. On the quarter inch front facing side, we have our black bolt and washer heads. And on the non-visible rear, we have the gold nut. Once all placement was final, the brackets were fully secured. Okay, so we're in the home stretch. I'm just gonna break down this flow chart so you can see how everything is connected together. So my existing power board is plugged straight into the wall and will give continuous power to my computer and Google Home. It also has the power cube plugged in, which is used for charging devices such as the phones, tablets, and camera batteries. I then mounted a new power board to the desk and plugged it into a smart power plug. 
Said it was somewhat straightforward, plug it in, download the app. The main hiccup was ensuring that it had remote access control enabled so that it would show in the Google Home app. This means I can turn off anything connected to that power board via my voice with Google Assistant. Once everything was plugged in, I began cable management. I burnt through about 50 Velcro straps, wrestling the tangly beast that is my desk. Finally, I fit off a magnetic cable holder for my iPad Pro. I'll talk more about the important feature that this cable brings to my entire setup in next week's episode. Okay, so the desk is finished. It's looking nice and clean underneath. So much better than it was before. Uh, but I just wanted to say before we go and do the before and after shots that this has taken me about five years to put together. Uh, from buying the speakers back when I was a DJ, the sound card at the same time, the monitor probably about three years ago, uh, the mouse two years, and the K95 Platinum probably two years as well. So uh, if you're looking at this and you're like, man, how do you get all that stuff? Uh, it's all just purchasing it at times when it's suitable, uh, purchasing and accumulating the gear when you can, and upgrading each component in your system as you require, not just going out and smashing it on the credit card. Well, you can do that if you want, I don't suggest it. Don't be afraid to buy secondhand. This Rode MT1 is secondhand, my first K95 was secondhand. That's another avenue to always upgrade your gear. And with that being said, let's check out the before and afters. Well there you have it, that's my custom cable management solution. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and click subscribe to find out the important feature that, that lightning cable plays in the entire setup next week. As for now, well, check out one of the videos coming up there and there and Bruce and I'll catch you next time. See ya.